Hi there. Thank you for joining me today on our last session in the study of the book of John. This has uh, been quite a number of videos that we've done on the book of John and it's been such a blessing. So we're going to be at John 21 from verse 15 to the end. And here Jesus is speaking to Peter and he's speaking to him about the destiny that he has for his life just like he's speaking to us. And then when when Jesus is speaking to Peter and telling him about what's going to happen in the end. And he looks to John, he said, well, what about him? And Jesus said, don't worry about him. That's not your concern. Your concern is that you follow me, that you do the things that I want for you. So come with me and let's get encouraged here to see how we can follow Jesus the way he wants us to and to fulfill the destiny that he has for each and every one of us. Once again, thank you for joining me on our session in the book of John. Today we are in John chapter 21, the last chapter of John, and at verse 15. So the disciples uh, kind of were floundering a bit. They didn't know what to do, so they left Jerusalem. They went up into the Sea of Galilee, and they decided to go fishing. They spent the whole night fishing. They didn't catch any fish, and as they were coming into shore, Jesus was there with a fire burning, and he says, just throw your nets on the right side. And they caught so many fish that they couldn't haul it into their boat. And yet, even though they had caught so many fish, their nets didn't break. And so if you want to see the significance of that, you can just go to the last session. We dealt with that very, very thing. So let's just jump into verse 15 here and see what the Lord has for us today. When they finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him a third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Whenever the Lord says something or brings a dream to you or brings a prophetic word three times, you need to sit up and take notice because he is trying to impress something very strong to you. He is trying to speak to you very strongly. Now, remember we said in the last time, the, the disciples were kind of floundering. They didn't, they didn't know what to do. So they were in Jerusalem. They were afraid of what was going to happen to them there. They were locking themselves in the, in the buildings. And it was a difficult situation. So they, they weren't sure what they were supposed to do. So they decided to go back to the Galilee. And as they got there, they were sitting around chatting. And, and Peter says, well, I'm going fishing because... That's what he knew, right? He, that's what he grew up in doing all the time. So they went out fishing without the direction of the Lord. They caught nothing all night long. As they were coming in, uh, they, they caught all these fish in, the, in their net when the Lord told them to throw their net out on the right side. And so as they're having breakfast and they're, they're chatting there, Jesus is saying to Peter, you know, do you love me more than these? You know, do you love me more than you love people? Do you love me more than, than, the, than the ones that are around? And, and he says, you, yes, Lord, you know that I do. And so this happens three times to the point where Peter was getting frustrated. And he says, you, you, you know, Lord, that I love you. You know that I care for you. You know, you, you know all things. And Jesus keeps saying to him, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. Because the call on Peter's life was not to be a fisherman. His call was not to be a fisherman. When, when Jesus chose him, he said to him, he says, come, I will make you fishers of men. And, and so fishers of fish are not what it, Peter was called to do. Peter, we know, he ends up being the, the head apostle. He ends up being the head elder in the church in Jerusalem. 
He, he ends up being very significant in the church. He's the one who first takes the gospel message to the Gentile people. It's through him that the Gentiles uh, come to the Lord. Of course, we know that Paul took up the mantle after that, and, and he spread the word mostly around the Gentiles, and Peter uh, concentrated more with the Jewish people. But in the beginning, the first uh, opening doors, opening into the Gentiles was through Peter. And Peter, Peter was saying here, you know, when Jesus was saying to him, do you love me more than these? And he says, of course I do. You know that I do. And so what Jesus was trying to get through to Peter, that there was a job for him to do. There was something for him to do. I want you to feed the sheep. I want you to feed the sheep. Well, what sheep was he talking about? Did Jesus have a flock of sheep somewhere that, that uh, he wanted Peter to go and look after? Did he have a flock of sheep somewhere up on the hills that Peter was supposed to become a shepherd of the sheep instead of a fisherman of the fish? Uh, but we know that that's not true, right? We know that what Jesus was talking about, he was talking about the people. He was talking about the ones that were gonna to come to the Lord. Now, at this point, there wasn't very many. There was only the ones that had been following Jesus. We know from, from uh, the day of Pentecost that there was 120 in that upper room. So it may be about the 120 that he's talking about, uh, which included the 12, of course, and Judas had, had betrayed Christ by this time and he wasn't there anymore. And so there was these people that needed to be fed. They were, they were youngsters in the things of God. They needed to be fed. And this was the job of Peter. Peter was going to be the, the, the pastor, if you will. He's the one who's going to lead the flock. He was the one who was going to be commissioned as pastor. And so he told, this is what he's telling them. He's telling them how important this is. Because he repeated this three times to Peter, it was, it's a very important thing. And it's also an important thing for us to understand too. When God gives a calling in our life, and especially if he, he calls you and he commissions you to do something three times, there is an urgency that is involved with that calling. And this is, this is what Jesus was doing with Peter. He spoke to him three times the same thing. Peter, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, you know that I do. Then feed my sheep. Three times he did this, even to the point where Peter was getting frustrated at him. Peter didn't totally understand what Jesus was saying because the point that Jesus was trying to push was feed my sheep. And of course, Peter, from what happened here and his frustration, I think he was thinking Jesus was questioning whether he loved him or not. Because in the end, he says, you know all things, you know that I love you. But this wasn't the point that Jesus was trying to push. This wasn't the thing that Jesus was trying to instill into Peter because Peter had kind of lost his way here. Peter, Peter had gone fishing when there was other work for him to do. Even though he had gone fishing, even though he had made the wrong choice, Jesus blessed them by them catching all these fish, uh, their nets not getting torn, but he still had another calling for Peter. And so he needed to stress to Peter, the importance of the calling that was upon his life. I wonder how many of us today are busy doing the things that we know to do and we're not fulfilling the call that God has on our life. You know, because for every one of us, and I've said this many times in this video series, that God has a, a destiny for every one of us. He has a destiny and a plan and a purpose. Just like the children of Israel were meant to enter in the promised land. There is a preparation that goes in our life that, that allows us to enter the promised land and enter into the destiny that God has for us and the purpose he has for us. And oftentimes we miss it because we're too busy doing what we know to do and we don't have ears open to hear what the Lord is saying to us. So even here where Jesus is instructing Peter, the point wasn't about Peter loving him. I'm sure the Lord knew Peter loved him. The question wasn't about Peter loving him. The point was, Peter, feed my sheep. In other words, stop going out and fishing and do what you're supposed to do. Your call is not fishing. Stop going out to fish. Even though if you go out fishing, I can bless you, that's not your call. Your call is to feed the sheep. So he says this to him three times. Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. So he's really pushing the point to Peter. So then he's continuing, he's talking to Peter. 
it seems like he's got Peter kind of off to the side when he's doing this. Verse 18, it says, Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself, and then you went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. In verse 19, he says, Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death with which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. So he was telling Peter, look, you're going to be in a difficult situation. They're going to dress you in clothes you don't want to be dressed in. And Peter ended up uh, hanging on a cross. Um, he refused to be hung the way Jesus was, so they hung him upside down. Then Peter uh, died on that cross hanging upside down. So this was, Jesus was telling them that he was going to give his life for Jesus, that he was going to be the shepherd of the people, but he was going to give his life. And so when Jesus is speaking to him here in verse 19, he said to him, this indicates the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Even though this is going to be your end, follow me. You know, feed my sheep. Be the shepherd that I want you to be. Fulfill the calling that I have for you. So as they were walking along, it says in verse 20, Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved was following him. Okay, this is John referring to himself, right? So Peter and Jesus, they must have been walking along talking. Peter turns and sees John. He's got in brackets here, this, is, this was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and said, Lord, who is going to betray you? So this is from John 13, uh, when they were having the last supper and Jesus said that there was one that was going to betray them. So John was leaning against Jesus and Peter was leaning against John and Peter turned and said to John, ask him who's going to betray him. So John turned to Jesus and said, who is going to betray you? And Jesus says to John, the one whom I, he took a piece of bread, and he says, the one to whom I dip and give this to, he will be the betrayer. And so he dipped it and he gave it to Judas. So when Peter saw him, he said, Lord, what about him? Jesus has said to Peter, this is how you're going to do, do your life. This is what your calling is going to be. This is how you're going to die. This is, you know, you're, this is, this is the martyr that you're going to be. You're going to suffer and die for following me. And so Peter, he didn't want to be alone on this whole thing. So he says, well, what about him? He says to John, what about him? Jesus answered, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. This is such a powerful verse for you and I. This is such an a, a, a eye-opening thing, right? So Peter wanted some company, just like most of us do. You know, if we're going to go to the cross and die on the cross, well, let's bring somebody with us. I don't want to do this on my own, right? He wanted somebody with him. He wanted, he wanted to know he was part of the crowd. And so he says, well, what about him? And Jesus says, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. In other words, don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Don't worry about what everybody else is, what, how the Lord is dealing with them. Don't worry about what everybody else's calling is. Don't worry about the difficulties that everybody else might have in their life. You follow me. You do what you, I want you to do. And this is a word I believe the Lord is speaking, not only to Peter, but also directly to you and I. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Don't worry about what everybody else's calling is. You follow me. If it means dying, if it means being a martyr, if it means being hung upside down on a cross, you follow me. This is what Jesus is saying to Peter, and I believe it's what he's saying to us. We need to stop looking at everybody else around us. We are a unique being created by God with a purpose. And nobody else is going to fulfill the purpose that we have. Nobody else is going to do the things that we do. If we refuse to fulfill our purpose, if we refuse to do the things that God is calling us to do, he will find somebody else that will do it and we will miss out on it. But it's not going to be somebody like you. You have been designed, you have been purposed to fulfill the calling that God has for you. And, and you can do it better than, than the next guy. And you, you know, if God has got a calling for you, you might be third, fourth, or fifth down the line that God's asked to do this, but the others have refused, right? But we need to take this uh, saying that Jesus said to Peter, if I want him to live until I come back, what is that to you? He's saying, it's none of your business. Don't worry about him. Don't worry about what I got him doing. Don't worry about what I'm going to do with him. You worry about you. You follow me. You do what I ask you to do. Peter, do you love me more than these? 
Yes, you know, Lord, I love you more than these. Feed my sheep. He's given the commission to Peter, right? This is your job. Feed the sheep. That's not John's job. This is your job. Feed the sheep. If I want to do something different with John, that's none of your business. You just concentrate on what is your business. You concentrate on what your call is. And this is the same thing that Jesus has for us, right? He has a plan and a purpose for each one of us. Verse 23, it says, Because of this, rumor spread amongst the believers that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say he would not die. He only said, If I want him to bring, remain alive until I return, what is that to you? John is clarifying what, what uh, Jesus had said to Peter. And uh, he said, I, he never said that I wasn't going to die. And we know that John died because he's not alive today. <laughs> so we know that he died. But he was the only disciple that didn't die a martyr's death. He's the only one that the history books tell us that he died of old age. Uh, even Paul was beheaded in, in Rome because of Nero who burnt down half of Rome and blamed it on Paul and Paul's head was chopped off and you know there was many many that were were sacrificed for their walk with the Lord but John died of an old age this is a disciple who testified these things and who wrote them down we know that his testimony is true so this is John speaking about himself he's bringing the book to a close here and he says in the last verse Jesus did many other things as well if every one of them had been written down, I suppose even the whole world would not have room for the books that would have been written. So John is telling us Jesus did so much more than what he was even able to write. In fact, as we've gone through the book of John, you may have realized most of the miracles that uh, John records are the ones that were performed on the Sabbath. And the reason was is because when Jesus was performing these miracles on the Sabbath, it was bringing anger and contention into the leadership of Israel. And it, it is what caused them to want to kill Jesus and to bring an end to his life. Of course, they thought they were getting rid of him. They didn't realize that they were bringing salvation into the world and that they were changing their whole way of life. And so John was concentrating mostly on how we come to the point of Jesus dying on the cross for us and forgiving us of our sins and, and bringing us to life. So I want to thank you for joining me for these sessions that we've done in the book of John. There's about 84, I think about 84 videos in the book of John. We, we've dealt in delved in quite deeply and it's been such a blessing for me to be able to bring this study in the book of John. Um, I'm going to start another series uh, next and it's going to be based on Matthew 5 and 17 where Jesus says, I have not come to abolish the law and the prophets but I have come to fulfill them. And that's going to be a very interesting study that I think many of you will really enjoy. And there's going to be a lot of revelation uh, through that study. I'm not sure how many sessions it'll take, but we'll see when we, when we get it done. So I welcome you to that new study. I haven't even put a title on it yet. So uh, once we get that all figured out on the first session, I will inform you all of that. I just want to thank you, those who have been following through. Uh, it's been such a blessing. Please uh, send me a word of encouragement through comments or whatever. I really appreciate that. And I appreciate those who, who have been so faithful. And uh, may the Lord bless you as you study his word, as you walk with him, as you fulfill the destiny and calling he has for your life. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity we've had to do these books of John. We just thank you, Lord, that it's been such a blessing, all these videos that we've done. And Father, the... The, the technical side, you've revealed many things to me that to, to improve the quality of these things and uh, to, for it to be a blessing for many people. Father, we just pray that your word does not uh, return void, that as your word goes out to the ones that have been listening, that it will touch their hearts and that each one would look at themselves and they would understand that God loves them in such a way that he has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us. And Father, we just love Love this opportunity you have given us to share these words and to share uh, the things in the book of John because we know that the book of John is such a, such a blessing. We know uh, Jesus that John was a man that uh, was dear, dear to your heart 
as all the disciples were, but but he was loved by you in a special way and he had a special relationship with you and that comes out in his book and uh, we know that our relationship with you is increased when we read this book and, and gain the understandings that John is trying to reveal to us through the Holy Spirit. We just thank you for your word that is so powerful. We just love you. We love your word and we love each one out there. Father, I pray for each one who's been listening. Father, that this would be a blessing to them. Father, I just pray that you would just pour out your spirit on each and every one. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Again, thank you for joining me for this series. Remember, God loves you so much. He has a plan, a purpose, and a destiny for you. It may not be feed my sheep, but it's something. So hear what God is saying to you. And remember, he loves you so much. Catch you on the next series that we do. Girls, take us home.